The Fiqh of Fasting, Zakat al-Fitr, and Eid by Sheikh Haytham ibn Muhammad Sarhan, teacher in the Masjid of the Prophet in Medina, translated by Abu Abbas Naveed Ayaz. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Definition of Fasting Linguistic definition is to abstain from something. Islamic definition is worshipping Allah by abstaining from food, drink and other actions which invalidate a person's fast from the true dawn to sunset. The pillars of fasting Number 1. A sincere intention Niyyah. Number two, abstaining from anything that invalidates the fast. Types of fasting and their niya, intention. Number one, obligatory fasts. This includes the month of Ramadan, expiations and vows. A person must make an intention the night before he fasts, i.e. before the Fajr prayer. It is sufficient for a person to make a single intention for the whole month at the beginning of Ramadan. The intention is in the heart and pronouncing it verbally is an innovation. Number two, voluntary fasts. The intention is made at any time of the day, as long as a person has not eaten or done something which would invalidate the fast. The reward for a voluntary fast is according to how early a person intends and begins his fast. Conditions for the obligation of a fast Number 1. Islam Fasting is only accepted from Muslims. Number 2. Intellect A person who is mentally disabled does not fast. Number 3. Puberty after the age of puberty, fasting is an obligation. However, when a young child reaches the age of distinction, tamiz, then he is encouraged and trained to fast by the guardian. Number four, residence. Fasting is not obligated upon a traveling person, although it is better to fast as long as there is no difficulty upon him. But why? A. The Prophet often fasted whilst on a journey. B. The fast need not be made up a later date. C. It is easier to fast during Ramadan. And D. A person gains the virtue of the month of Ramadan. Number 5. Health. An ill or weak person does not need to fast. And number 6. Purity. Purity from menstruation and postnatal bleeding. Wudu is not a condition for fasting. Fasting for the ill Number 1. Chronic illnesses A weak or old person who falls under this category, there is no obligation to fast. However, in this state, a poor person must be fed for each day missed. Each poor person must be given staple food of the locality such as wheat or rice to a measure of half a sa, approximately one and a half kilograms. It is also encouraged to give a condiment of meat and sauce. If this cannot be afforded, nothing is obligated. Number two, temporary illnesses, such as a menstruating woman, a woman suffering from postnatal bleeding, a breastfeeding woman, all fall under this category. They must make up the fasts at a later date according to the number of days missed. The beginning of Ramadan It can be known by one of two ways. Number one, sighting the moon. Number two, completion of 30 days of the month of Sha'ban. Recommended acts during the fast. Number one, Delaying the suhoor, the pre-dawn meal, until its latest time. Number two, iftar, 
breaking the fast at the earliest time. Number three, breaking the fast with fresh dates and water. If they are not found, then dry dates. If there is no food or drink, then the intention of iftar is done in the heart. Number four, du'a. During the day, especially before iftar, reciting Quran, charity, taraweeh, and dhikr. Number five, performing umrah. Number six, saying, I am fasting to the one who insults. Number seven, seeking the night of Qadr by increasing in good deeds in the last ten nights. Number eight, i'tikaf in the last ten days. Permitted acts during the fast. It is permitted for a fasting person to swallow saliva, taste a minute amount of food due to a necessity, take a shower, use the miswak, brush the teeth with toothpaste, use perfume, and any other action which is not an invalidator. A person can rinse the mouth with water, but this should not be done excessively. Acts which invalidate the fast. Number one, eating and drinking intentionally. If a person eats or drinks forgetfully, he should continue fasting. Number two, sexual intercourse. If a person has intercourse during his fast in the day of Ramadan, then upon him is the major expiation. They are a. Freeing a slave b. If he is unable to do so, then fasting two months consecutively c. If he is unable to do so, then feeding 60 poor people Number 3. Discharge of semen due to touching, kissing, hugging or any other action out of desire Number 4. Anything similar to eating or drinking, such as taking a nutritional injection. As for injections that have no nutritional value, they do not invalidate one's fast. Number five, bleeding due to cupping. A small amount of bleeding due to blood analysis or the like does not invalidate a person's fast. Number six, vomiting intentionally. Number seven, Menstruation and postnatal bleeding. Impermissible acts during the fast. These actions are impermissible but do not invalidate the fast. Number one, swallowing phlegm excessively. Number two, a young person kissing their respective partners as it may lead to other actions. Number three, false statements and other impermissible actions such as lying and backbiting. Number four, ill-mannered behavior and a lack of tolerance towards other people. Number five, fasting two days consecutively without breaking the fast in between. Voluntary fasts. Number one, six days of shawwal. For a person who has completed fasting the month of Ramadan, it is preferred to complete these six days consecutively. Number two, the day of Arafah, for a person who is not performing the Hajj. Number three, the day of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram, along with the 9th or the 11th of Muharram. Number four, every Monday and Thursday. Number five, three days of every month, specifically the 13th, 14th and 15th, of each Islamic month. Number six, throughout the month of Muharram. Number seven, fasting the first nine days of Dhul Hijjah. Number eight, the month of Sha'ban, especially the first half of Sha'ban. However, in the second half of Sha'ban, a person should reduce the number of days he is fasting. He should not fast the last days of Sha'ban so that they are joined to the first days of Ramadan. Disliked fasts, singling out Friday or Saturday. However, if a person fasts one of these days due to a specific reason, then it is not disliked. For example, if the day of Arafah falls on a Saturday, it is permissible to fast. Impermissible fasts. Number one, to specifically single out the month of Rajab for fasting. Number two, 
to fast the day of doubt. Fasting the day of doubt is the last day of Sha'ban, with the excuse that perhaps Ramadan has entered. Number three, the days of Eid. Number four, fasting the days of Tashriq, with the exception of a person performing Hajj who is required to but unable to sacrifice a sacrificial animal. Number five, joining two consecutive days of fasting without breaking the fast in between. Making up missed days. It is recommended for a person to make up missed days of fasting immediately after the day of Eid. It is not permitted for a person to delay making up fasts until the next Ramadan. The relatives of a deceased person can make up for the missed days on behalf of the deceased. Zakat al-Fitr This is a charity paid by Muslims at the end of Ramadan on the day of Eid. It is an obligation upon any Muslim who can afford it and reaches the sunset. A person should do this for himself and his family members who are under his responsibility. It is also recommended for a man to donate on behalf of the fetus in the womb of his wife. Wisdom behind donating Zakat al-Fitr Number one, it purifies a person who has just fasted the month of Ramadan from any false and idle speech that may have emanated from him. Number two, it helps the poor so that their needs are met on the day of Eid and they do not have to ask others. Time for its donation. Number one, permitted time. Before Eid, by one or two days. Number two, recommended time. Before the Eid prayer, after Salat al Fajr. Number three, impermissible time, after the Eid prayer. The amount to be donated. A person should donate one sa'a, approximately three kilograms, of the staple food of one's country, such as barley or rice. It is not permitted to donate money of its value. But money can be given to a person or a charity who will buy food on one's behalf and distribute it. The Eid Prayer This is a congregational obligation upon every adult male Muslim. And women are strongly encouraged to attend. However, if the prayer was missed, it should not be prayed individually. The Time for the Eid Prayer It is to be performed after the sun has risen to the height of a spear until midday. Recommended acts for the Eid prayer. Number one, the sunnah is to pray in an open area and not inside a building, although it is permissible to pray inside the masjid if there is a need. Number two, to eat an odd number of dates before the Eid prayer. Number three, to bathe perfume and wear one's best clothes. Number four, to go to the Eid prayer via one route and return along a different route. Number five, to give the greetings of Eid by saying, Taqabbal Allah minna wa minkum. May Allah accept from us and you. Number six, the takbir during Eid. Number seven, to say the takbir on the night before Eid as well as after the obligatory prayers until sunset on the day of Eid. The description of the takbir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillah alhamd. The description of the Eid prayer. This is a congregational prayer of two raka'a, units of prayer performed before the khutbah, sermon, after the first takbir to begin the prayer, six further takbir are made. Thereafter, Surah Al-Fatiha and another Surah of Choice are recited. After bowing and prostrating as normal, one stands for the second unit and the takbir is made five times. Thereafter, the second unit is completed as normal.